Well, Elon Musk's SpaceX is leading the rocket launch market here in the U.S., but one Lazard investment banker warning that its monopoly could, quote, choke the sector, and it's a, quote, huge concern. Now, in the second quarter alone, SpaceX had 22 orbital launches, more than 10 times that of U.S. competitor Rocket Lab. And year-to-date, SpaceX has launched over 60 missions, an average of about one launch every four days. Now, for more on this, we turn to Space Fund founder Rick Tumlinson. Space Fund is an investor in SpaceX, as well as several other companies uh, within the sector. Rick, it's good to see you. So let's first just start off with what we heard from one investment banker there at Lazard raising this issue just about the potential monopoly here that SpaceX has on the industry. Is that a risk? Why or why not? You know, any anytime you have one company, um, by the way, thank you for having me on. Uh, but anytime you have one company that um, is so dominant, you you can have the potential um, of a monopoly. Um, on the other hand, in this in this particular case, uh, what's happening is you've got a company that is just so excellent, uh, that is doing the job so well, um, and is is moving ahead so rapidly. Um, that it is really more incumbent on the other companies to catch up, to to adapt, uh, and to move forward to compete at the same level as SpaceX. It's, the, SpaceX isn't doing anything wrong. Um, they're doing everything actually very, very right. As you mentioned, there were, I think, 62 launches this year. Um, we do see other companies rising. We see companies like Rocket Lab, which I think is going to ever... Um, ever more be uh, on their heels. And uh, we see others that are in the background, You names you don't know, but they're coming up as well. Um, but no, I, I think I'm not really worried about SpaceX having um, a monopoly uh, at all at this point. Rick, you know, is this really just about the first mover advantage when we talk about rockets that are reusable? You know, why have companies like Rocket Lab, and you could put ULA behind that, why have they not been able to keep pace? Is it just about SpaceX having that head start? I think you're, you're identifying two different cases here. Um, in the case of ULA, they come from old aerospace. Um, what I like to refer to as the use it and throw it away approach. Um, and they're used to a whole different set of contracting roles. They're used to being able to sort of roll in with lobbyists and get government contracts, uh, those kinds of things. And um, so then you have SpaceX showing up and there's a big difference in the, um, the motivation between them. In SpaceX, you have a guy who absolutely his life drive is to put people on Mars and to put as many people into space as possible. So his goal is to bring the cost down and, and create a uh, higher frequency. Uh, on, the, on the part of ULA and the other big aerospace companies, their job um, as they see it, is to keep the price as high as possible and not rock the boat. Now, um, when you talk about Rocket Lab, they're more over in the uh, SpaceX side. They're just new. They're just new. Give them some time. They're moving very, very fast. Peter Beck is an amazing CEO. And I think that he's, as I said earlier, he's going to be nipping at Elon's heels uh, fairly soon. Rick, what does that timeline look like when we talk about the rise of some of the competitors out there? They're doing everything they can to chase SpaceX, focusing on Rocket Lab. Is this something that, I guess, what do you see that timeline in, in terms of how long it's going to take for them to catch up to SpaceX? That's going to be interesting. Um, you know, I, I've been down on the uh, Texas coast nearby here and, uh, you know, where they're building the uh, and getting ready to fly another of the uh, starships. Um that is going to be such a quantum leap in space transportation that it's hard to describe. I've, uh, in some of my lectures, I describe it as sort of the, the automobile, the steamship, and the airplane all at once. Because all of a sudden, we're going to have the ability of mass transportation at a relatively low cost to space. And um, because they're using completely reusable uh, spaceships, which I like to differentiate. I use the word ships because we don't throw ships away. Um, and so that's going to be a massive jump. But again, Peter and his company, they're rolling along fast. There are other companies that are coming. The big differentiator between them and the old school is they're not throwing anything away. 
They're looking at uh, incredible methods of, of uh, increasing efficiency. Um, they're also greener. And uh, so I think that we're, we're going to see it. Uh, SpaceX is going to kind of break it open. And then we'll see others move in. I don't think there's going to be a monopoly in, let's say, five years by any means. But I think for the first couple of years after Starship flies, and I should say flies a second time, which is the critical point, they can fly it, bring it back, reload it, and fly it again. Um, within a few years after that, I think we'll see the others starting to catch up. 